Okay, guys, I'm back. I had to re-log in. My Surface Pro had uh, timed out. So, but I'm back now. So, uh, what I'd like to do first is look at that problem from 2.5 that Christina had asked about, and I want to show you why what we did uh, didn't work. And um, then we'll go on and go over the questions you guys found during the break. So there's actually two methods for finding percentiles or quartiles in particular. Quartiles. One method is using a formula, and that's the method they were trying to use. And the other method was what I showed you, where you find the median, and then you do the middle of the top path or the bottom half, the lower numbers, and the middle of the upper numbers to get your third quartile. So um, that formula, if you look at view an example or help me solve that, that formula is another way to find quartiles, but it's not the way it shows in the textbook, and it's also not the way my graphing calculator does it. My graphing calculator does it like this. So um, this is what I want to tell you about this 2.5 number 6. Uh, you can try another one. Sometimes this method will work on that because sometimes it comes out the same no matter which method you use. So you can try doing a similar exercise and try this method again. Um, I will tell you exactly what they do on this one. So when they use the formula to find the 75th percentile, I'm just going to tell you because it comes out the same every time. When they use the formula to find the 75th percentile, they end up with finding out that it's the 22nd point five fifth <laughs> entry, which means instead of take, we took the 23rd entry. So what if you if 22nd? So if you want to do it the way they're doing it, what you do is you you're going to take that whatever's you're going to average the 22nd and the 23rd entry to get that um, answer. And then what they want in the blank, I did find this out too. So sometimes it'll be the same answers if you just take in the middle like I did here. And sometimes it will be um, different than that one. So if you, if you want to do it the way they did and be sure you get it right, uh, average the 22nd and the 23rd number in this bottom list. And then um, then when you list the ones, say it had still come out to be 56, okay? Because I think that I think there was a 56 here. So I think the 22nd and the 23rd were 56. So that would still be Q3, the third quartile. And so when they ask you to list all the data values that are bigger than that, you do not list the 56 because it's not bigger than itself. So I don't remember what the numbers were, but and you're going to list them as many times as they appeared. So if there were two 57s, you would do that, and then 58, and then maybe there were two 60s, and uh, so you're going to list out all of the numbers in the list that are bigger than that Q3. So even if there had been another 56 here, you wouldn't list it because it's not bigger than 56. You would go to the first one that was bigger than 56 and then list every single number even if it's repeated. So hopefully that will help. If you're still getting it wrong and you'd like for me to look at it, I can go in and give you credit for it. So if you get it wrong, like you're off by a little bit and you're tired of messing with it, just Email me and I will go in there and look at your um, answer. And if you're close, I'm just gonna I'll just give you credit for it so you can get a hundred on that assignment. Okay? If it's the only thing you've missed. So hopefully that helps. Moving on, Christina, you'd ask about that. Do you understand? Did, did what I said just said make any sense to you? Is Christina here? Uh, no, she's not here. So. Hopefully that will make sense if and when she watches the um, recording. Oh, I put myself a reminder up here. I'm putting two bonus questions on the test. And um, they'll be worth two and a half points each. 
And you'll know that they're bonus questions because I'm going to put that at the beginning of them. It's going to say bonus question kind of like because you'll have to show work on the bonus questions too. So it'll say bonus question, show work, and um, you don't have to do those. Those won't count against you. So I can't make it not count against you in um, my stat lab. But remember, I'm going to go in and grade your work, and I'm going to add five points if you did the homework up to 90 and stuff like that. So the grade they're going to have for you in my stat lab isn't going to be accurate anyway. So just know that you're okay if you skip the two bonus questions because they're I, I won't let them count against you. All right? All right, now we're ready to go on to your questions. So, Diamond, let's start with you because you had asked specifically about doing a particular problem. Did you find one in the homework that you'd like to go over? Yes. Um, it's number eight on the 2.4 homework. Number eight on 2.4, okay. Okay, it says, um, okay, so I'm going to talk to you through uh, what you can do here. I don't know if, um, I don't know if I'm going to have the ability to make my, uh, stat crunch available to you. I don't have a problem with that because if I want to see your work, I'll just make it a show work problem, okay? Um, but I think on this one I'm going to show you, let's pretend that this was one where I was asking you to show the work because there is one like this where I'm going to ask you to show the work. So let's pretend it's one of those. Okay. Okay. So that means you're going to need to put the numbers in order first. Um, well, actually, we're doing range, mean, variance. Oh, no, we don't need them in order, so I can just write them down. So I'm going to show you my numbers here. And it's going to take me a little bit. 19, 23, I'm going to try to do this part fast, okay? 13, 18, 16, 22, 17, 15, and 15. Although, if I put them in order first, that would have been helpful because the highest one and the lowest one would have been really Actually, easy. Actually, if you, if you want to um, go ahead and erase it, I have them in order. It's like I have all the steps down. It's just when I get to the variance and the standard deviation. The, yes, that's when I get kind of mixed up. Okay, so um, yeah, if you want me to use your numbers, I can do that. Is that what you would prefer? It's the same numbers, but I just ha already have them in order. Is what I'm saying. Oh, okay, so when you did range, so let's talk about this because this is going to be on the test. So if you were showing your work for the range, on the test, in your work, it should say range equals, and what do you think I want to see for the work on the range? Mm, I have no idea. <laughs> the range is how spread apart the numbers are. Okay. It's the difference... And the range is what we use to find class width, too. When we find class width for a frequency distribution, I'm going to just write that up here because that's something else that's on the test. Class width, you do the range, and you divide by the number of classes. Sorry, that, that's really bad writing. Sorry about that. That says number of classes. And then you round up. Okay, so okay. for just the range, that's going to take the biggest number. It looks like the biggest number is 23, and my smallest number is 12. That's the work I would want okay, to that's the work. Okay. okay. Now, because I'm going to be doing other calculations, normally I like for you to work down, but I'm kind of space is at a premium, so I'm going to go ahead and put my answer beside it. Uh, 23 minus 12 will be... 11, subtraction is my, 2 from 3 is 1, yes, 11, mm -hmm. okay. So there, I did part 1. 
So I would put 11 in here, and I'm just going to make sure. Okay. Now, the second thing it asks me to find is the mean. Now, which is good because you can't do variance unless you know the mean. So if I was doing the mean here, I would want the sum of the numbers divided by n. And it says it's a sample, so that would be lowercase n. So to get the sum of the numbers, and when you show your work on the mean, guys, you don't have to write all these added out, but I do want to see what you got for that sum because then I'll know if you entered something wrong in your calculator. So I'm going to put these in really fast here. It should be 17.4. Well, and your, num your numbers are exactly the same as mine, you're certain? Yes. So what did you get for the sum? Did you write down the sum of all of them? 174. Okay, that's not what I get. I got. So let me check and make sure I put all my numbers in. 12, 19, 23, 13, 18, 16, 22, 17. Oh, I have an extra 17 in there. 17, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, Okay. Because I only have one. Oh, I think, let me make sure my numbers are right. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I think they're right. Uh, well, we'll know in a minute. Okay. Because when I do this, when I do the mean, I'm going to take that sum. And you see, if you're showing your work for the mean, I want to see that number on the test. Okay. Everybody know that in, when you're doing show work, you can use the A to type. You don't have to draw. You can use the A to type. If you want to draw something, like with your mouse, you can use the pencil. I think it looks something like this. You can use the pencil. So this is type, and this is draw, and you're not going to be able to upload a picture because you can't use your phone. So I want you to either use type or draw when you show work. And then remember, you can choose a background if you want to. Um, the line paper background is pretty helpful. <clears throat> so back to this, the work you should show for the mean. Notice I label it. I might even go so far as to say, okay, the symbol for this is X bar because this is a sample. So my sample mean is going to be 170 divided by N, which was 10. And that's going to give me 17 is my mean. If it didn't come out even, then I would round that to one place past the data or whatever my math lab told me to round to. So normally on one like this, if it didn't come out even, we would round to the tenths place. But this one came out even, so it's just 17. So now we get to the harder part, which is the variance. Since this is a sample, Since this is a sample, the variance will be S squared. That would be the symbol for sample variance. And what I'm going to do is show you the work you have to do. And this takes up some space, so I'm going to need some space here. But this number here is the important number. I have to take each data value, subtract the mean from it, and square that difference. And then because it's a sample, with the variance, after I do the sum of the x minus x bar squared, after I do that, I'm going to divide by n minus 1, because for sample variance, you divide by n minus 1. This is on your formula sheet. For population variance, you divide by n. So it's important to note and look for the word see if the problem says it's a sample or are we looking at the whole population you need to know that so that you'll use the right formula okay so for us that n minus one is going to be nine remember because we had 10 data values so but to get this part that's the part that's a little tedious because you have to take each data value i'm going to write kind of small so i can hopefully fit them all in i'm going to take 12 minus the mean 
square it plus 19 minus the mean square plus 23 minus the mean square plus I need space 13 minus the mean squared plus 18 minus the mean squared plus 16 minus the mean and squared plus, and I'm going to go to a second line, 22 minus 17 squared plus 17 minus 17 squared, well at least that would be zero, plus um, 15 minus the mean squared plus another 15 minus the mean and square it, and all of that's going to be divided by 9. Now, none of those things, and notice I always put the x first. That's important. Although, it's not going to, once you square it, it'll come out positive anyway, so it won't be huge if you get them backwards. So, like on this one, like 12 minus 17, that's negative 5. So if I did this in my calculator, I would get 25 plus, that's going to be 2 squared is 4. 23 minus 17 is 6, that's going to be 36. Plus, this is going to be 16 plus, 18 minus 17 is 1, squared is 1. That's going to be negative 1 squared is 1. That's going to be 5 squared is 25. That's zero, and that's going to be four plus four. And all of that is going to be divided by nine. So I have to, so for each data value, and this is why the variance is a little harder. And let me, I'm just putting it in just to make sure. So we got 17 as the mean. That was correct. So the variance, if I ask you to show your work, what I'm really wanting to see, I need to see, either this step or this step on your work, or both. It might be hard to fit both of them in, though. So you should do it on paper first. So then all you have to do is just type it. It might be easier to show this step here, because those little squares are kind of hard to show. There is a symbol you can use for that square when you're showing that. So if I wanted to show that, if I was typing and I wanted to show 12 minus 17 squared, this is the symbol you can use. It's a little up arrow thing that's a carrot, called a carrot. And you can use that to show squaring if you want to show this step. But you might do this on your paper and then just write the squares. Do the subtraction and write the squares down here. So then I would need to add all of those. So that's, I was going to try to add it in my head, but that will take too long. So I'm going to do it in my calculator. So I'm going to find that sum. So that gives me 116, and I need to divide that by 9. I suggest that you show me this number here in your work, the sum of those squares, so that if you made a, a calculator error, I can catch it, and I won't take off very much. And then I'm going to divide that by 9. And that gives me 12 point, and then I get repeating eights like that. And this says round to the nearest hundred. So following the rounding rules that they tell me in my stat lab, I would round this to 12.89. I'm going to box that as my final answer on the variance. And I'm going to type that in just to make sure. Okay, that's the right answer. Okay, so I'm going to stop there for a second because I want to see if anybody has a question. No, you're not. You're only going to have to do this. There might be two questions total on the test that ask you to find variance, no more than that. Um, I think there's only one where I ask you to show the work. And um, <clears throat> like I said, when you're showing your work, I would recommend showing this step. Show me one of these two steps. I don't care which one. And then I want to see this step and this and box your final answer. Or you can highlight it or change the color or something. Just indicate that's my variance and that is S squared.
before I go on to the standard deviation, I want to take them. I want to stop for a second and see if anybody has a question about anything I did. Okay. I ran out of room, but I have another board. So let's pull it up. I figured this would come in handy. And now we want to find the standard deviation. which is S because it's a sample and S is the square root of S squared. Here's the thing you have to be careful of. Make sure under the radical, under the square root, that you put the whole thing, not the rounded. So I'm not going to put 12.89. I'm going to put 12 point and I'm just going to do ah, four or five eighths under there. If you have it in your calculator, I want to show you something because this makes this is a trick to make things go faster. So um, let me see. I'm going to hold this up. Hopefully you guys can see. I know there's some glare. Hopefully you can see uh, that I did 116 divided by 9 and I got 12 point repeating eights. I'm going to take the square root of that. I'm going to leave that unrounded answer in my calculator. I'm going to take the square root of it. I'm going to show you how to do that in your calculator. So what I'm going to do is I'm leaving that there and I'm going to say I'm going to find the square root, which is the second function on the x squared button. So let me see if I can do this without a glare. So I'm going to do second x squared and notice it gave me a square root and parentheses. And then I wanted to take the square root of the number that I just got as an answer. So the way you do that on a calculator, okay, I'm trying, I'm looking at the thing, trying to see if I'm doing a glare. So I do second and down here on top of the minus button. You'll see it says ANS. That means answer. And you'll notice now it says the square root of the answer. You can end the parentheses or not. And then hit, hit equals. And on mine, when I do that, it comes up with 3.590. I think that's enough places. My math lab is asking me to round this to the tenths place. So that for my final answer for standard deviation is going to be 3.6. And that's the correct answer. Now when you do this in my math in my stat lab, when I, if I ask you to show the work, I will probably ask for work for a specific part. So I may not ask you for all of your work. I may say, show me the work for your variance, the calculation you did for the variance. Um, and I might say for the variance and the standard deviation, but I realize that there's a limited amount of space in the show work in my stat lab. So I'm going to try to only ask you to show me work for one part. And I'm going to assume that if you know how to do that one part correctly, that you will get the other parts right. Okay. Now rounding's kind of a big deal, so make sure you round correctly. Make sure you know how to round these things. Anybody have a question about why I rounded this one? Why I rounded the variance to 12.89? And here I rounded the standard deviation to 3.6. So if you have any questions about this, because this will be a problem on the test. Let me know. Let me let the dog in so she'll quit whining. Come on, hurry. I have a needy chihuahua. All right. Does that help, Diamond? Yes, very much so. Thank you. Great. And then now you guys know that you can come back and watch the recording. You know, if I went too fast, you know, you can come back and watch the recording and see all of this again. I know that I didn't write extremely neatly, but hopefully if you watch the recording, uh, you'll be able to tell what I did here. So those were all the parts of that one. And that covers mean also, which is doing being able to do mean, median, mode, range, variance, standard deviation, and then find z-scores and quartiles 
that's a lot of the test. And then that, remember the frequency distribution. Don't forget, I know a lot of people think when they do the frequency distribution, oh, that was pretty easy. I don't need to do that again. But then when they take the test, they forgot. So before you take the test, make sure you go back and practice on the frequency distributions back in 2.1, even if you've already made 100 on that. Does everybody know how to redo a problem that you've already already um, completed? Does anybody have a question about that? You know, you can click on similar exercise and even once you get it right, it's right. So you don't have to worry about missing it. But similar exercise gives you an opportunity to practice it, to practice it without using the helps maybe. So sometimes people will say, I can do it on the homework, but I can't do it on the test. Um, usually that's a matter of not practicing until you can do it without the helps. So, and even though I'm letting you write some things on your formula sheet, you still need to be pretty fast to add at least a few things and know how to do it pretty well so that you don't have to spend a lot of time remembering what the procedure was. So practice this several times try to even do the same problem over and over until you can not look at any helps or notes or anything and just do it then you know you're ready to take a test okay what else did you guys find over the break did anybody find anything else that you'd like to go over Or does anybody have any further questions about the test? I will say something earlier about um, scratch paper for the test is um, say that again, Diamond. About what? A scratch paper. Um, yeah. For the test, so we can use that, um, and we have to show like work on the test, or we can just use the scratch paper. Right. No, you're going to use the scratch paper and then there will be a few questions on the test where you also have to put your work into my stat lab. Not oh, okay. all of them. Okay. okay. I'm going to pick out about, ah, about five for you to show work on. But remember, you should embrace those because that's your opportunity to earn partial credit. All the other questions are going to be right or wrong. But if I do a show work, that means you have an opportunity, if you show me enough of your work, and I can tell that you're uh, doing some of the steps right, then I will give you partial credit on those questions. So you want to do that, okay? You want to show the work when I give you that opportunity. The okay. reason why I'm having you show your work on paper, and by the way, don't use a spiral. It needs to be loose leaf paper or blank paper. And on your desk, remember, I want those pieces of paper set out separately. So, and they should all be blank except one, which is your formula sheet. And like I said, if you'd like to write extra stuff on the formula sheet or put some examples on the back, you can on that one piece of paper. But all of these should be blank and no spiral. So you can't have a spiral sitting there. It has to be separate sheets of paper. What else? Sometimes I can't think of everything about the test. The first test is always the hardest in a way because you're learning exactly what it is you need to do. I will send out an email though with instructions. I will make an announcement about the test and I will put instructions under test under tests. So when you go to tests and Blackboard, you go to that link in Blackboard then I will have, you'll see some things pop up, and one of the things will be test one instructions. And underneath that, you'll see test one, and I'll say chapters one and two, and it will say um, remotely proctored. So these will be two separate things. If you would like, you can print off those test one instructions. That would be something else you could have up here if you feel like you need them while you're taking the test. So be sure and look over this. This is important. And then you'll click on you'll click on this. And when you click on this, a link will come up just like it does with the Proctorio practice quiz. 
And when you click on that link, it will take you into my math lab and it will automatically put in the password for you. If you're running into a problem where it's asking you for a password or it's asking you to sign into my math lab, you know, that means you didn't do the steps in the right order. So remember what I told you. So you're going to first, when you're ready to take the test, and this will be on the instructions, you're going to first sign in to my stat lab in the class. And then you're going to go to here. Now, these are the same instructions you should follow for doing the proctorial practice quiz. Open up my stat lab first and sign, get into the class, and then go to Blackboard and click on uh, proctorial practice quiz. Everybody should do that. Guys, if you don't do the proctorial practice quiz, then when you run to, if you run into problems when you try to take the test, what I'm going to say back to you is, you didn't take the proctorial practice quiz because that's what you need to use to work out all the kinks and glitches and find out what's what's going to work what's not going to work that's what that's there for and I gave you unlimited attempts so there's there's no excuse for not practicing that ahead of time try to do that before Saturday I will probably have the test become available Saturday so that uh, to make sure everybody can uh, do it at a time when they're not having to work. So you'll have Saturday, and at least Saturday, Sunday, and all day Monday. Kendra? Okay, I have a question. Okay, can I take the test on Sunday? Is that going to be possible? Sunday, if that will be one of the days it's open, yes. So, yes. Okay, so with proctorial, if I, I could take, I should take that Saturday before I take the test on Sunday. That's yeah, maybe even take it a couple of times just to get really comfortable with it and find out if there's any issues. I would say do, do the proctorial practice quiz. I would say do it at least twice. Unless you, do, unless you do it once and everything goes along without a hitch and you just don't have any questions. And you, oh, I got this. And that's fine. But if it were me, I'd practice at least a couple of times. Plus, the questions in the proctorial practice quiz are pretty decent review questions for you uh, to help you see what you can, what you'll be able to expect on the test. Some pretty good uh, review questions. Also, don't forget to take the LC quiz, the Learning Catalytics quiz. So let's make a list here of things. Um, that you need to make sure this is what you want to try to do before taking the test. So there's a learning catalytics quiz, and that's a review. It's a test one review. So you want to do that. And that's for a grade. That's for a quiz grade. Um, you should do the um, Definitions and symbols memory quiz. Mm -hmm. uh, this is from the interpreter. I'm just letting you know I have to leave for the 12:36 in my time. Oh, it sure is. Okay. 12:30. I apologize. I was just letting you know. That's fine, Chloe. Um, not that's not in. Uh, just, you know, thanks for letting me know. Um, I'll try to write down most of what I'm saying here. Yes, uh, um, Kendra knows that it's recorded, so if she has any questions, um, she's going to write them on the list. So. Okay, okay, thank you. So we're going to do this and this, and we're going to do this, and I would do this a few times. Remember, treat this like a game. Try this without notes. 
You can do that as many times as you want. And then we all need to do the proctorial, the proctorial practice quiz. And I would recommend doing this at least twice. And then the last thing I would try to do is get my, all my homework up to 90 or above. Ninety or higher. By Saturday. Or at, at least before you take the test. One thing I would like to emphasize, one more thing, is don't wait to the last minute to take the test. Okay, other questions? I know class time is over, but if you guys have other things you'd like for me to go over, I can stay go over those. Also remember, um, I have office hours today. Uh, the best time to um, come to my office hours with questions today will be between 2.30 and 3, and then between uh, Really, that's about between 2.30 and 3. Um, I will be working with some students from 3 to 4.30 or so. So if you have a question and want to come to my office hours, try to do it between 2.30 and 3. So see, I see Diamond and Kayla are still here. Do either of you have a question before we go? No. OK. All right, then um, good luck on the test. Watch for my email, and I will uh, see you all in class again next Wednesday.